We just finished looking at the many lamb terms telling us that a lamb is kosher. The matrix continues to lead us down toward the goat. However, the next term that supports the case that the goat is kosher also supports the fact that the herd is kosher. After looking at the goat terms that were shown before in the table of the flock, we will examine the held terms at their lowest skip. The high skip, bull term, is statistically extremely significant and was discovered by inspecting two other coinciding terms that have many letters in common. When the Bible describes the requirement of an animal to be sacrificed, without a question, an essential fundamental requirement is that the animal has to be perfect. This next term, although it does not use the term sign, it gives an indication of what a kosher animal has to be. It has to be perfect. This term is the third term that shares the same slanted angle in the matrix and shares many letters with the last two terms that we just saw. It tells us only perfection it has in it and your bull. The term is telling us that the master of the universe's sign indicates perfection and the bull also has perfection. This is an opportunity to equate the herd to the bull by saying that all the terms studies up to now apply also to the bull and by extension to the entire herd. The perfection applies not only to the sign itself and to the requirement of a perfect sacrifice and food, a perfect food for men. In Talmudic application, the term used for perfection also implies that the animal is a not a dangerous animal. This point has a fascination implication. Kosher animals cannot be animals that are dangerous to men, such as lions and other jungle animals. And also, once an animal has been declared dangerous, it must not be used by men for any purpose. Very appropriately, the bull is used here. The bull is the only kosher animal in the Bible that is mentioned that if it is injures a man more than once, it has to be destroyed. We saw many lamb terms sharing letters with the flock term. We also saw the flock and the lamb terms share letters with the kosher sign terms. Now we have the other part of the flock, the goat. In our independent goat terms, we find a confirmation that they bear a kosher sign. In the case of the female goat, the word sign is part of the goat term. In the case of the male goats, the term my sign is a gift is part of both goat terms. In the case of the first male goat, the sign term includes all the letters of the goat term. In the second goat term, the sign term includes all but one letter of the goat term. As we leave the flock, we have a minor chicken versus the egg dilemma. Where is the matrix leading us first? The herd is kosher because the matrix emphasizes it, the calf, your domestic animal, or, in no uncertain terms, the matrix repeats that the bull and cow have the master of the universe's signs. So, which member of the herd should we examine first? When we follow the extended calf term, we find that the matrix is telling us that the calf always had the sign. That is the kosher sign. The matrix is also telling us which came first? It is the calf. It tells us that it had the sign since the beginning. And what about the kosher signs that the bull and cow have that we shall see soon? The sign terms 21 and 22 that are in front of us and that the calf shares a letter with them are the same two sign terms that the bull and cow share a letter with. 
The cow and the bull terms share the letter P with several terms shown in the matrix. We saw those terms indicate that the sign is there, glory, and a crown. The terms, this is a bull, and you are a cow, seen at the bottom of the screen, also have indication that they have a kosher sign as part of their respective terms. This is indicated at the top of the screen. In total, we have five indicators that the cow and the bull are kosher, while the calf has four. The truth is that we can see that there are nine indicators that the herd is kosher, and we still have to look at the ox. Let us now zero in on the herd that is found in close proximity at the center of the matrix. Here we can find the ox term touching the bull and the cow terms. The term tells us that the ox shall be eaten. The ox term is also part of several other stamps of approvals, such as the term eat like this brother and introduce him to kosher food and happy is the one that eats it. The herd is fenced in also by another complex eat term, which specifies that you can eat your domestic animal. Because in me, or in the specific domestic animal, the master of the universe put his sign, truth. The herd is the kosher sign and the sign of glory, on which is the horns, that can be seen clearly by all from far. The cow and bull terms have the word sign as part of their respective terms. Here is a final quick view at the herd with its related terms. If anyone has the slightest reservation about the massive indications that the flock and herd are kosher, the matrix comes up with another stamp of approval. It tells us that with the, with the ox, gazelle, and lamb, you will be kosher. It can also be read as be kosher, ox, gazelle, and lamb, i.e. they are okay. With this, we will leave for now the flock and herd and move on to greener pastures in the wild with the gazelle. We will return to the flock later where we will take a close look at the deer and the ram at the same time. Typically, we look at the lowest skip terms. However, there are a few exceptions when a term is statistic, statistic, statistically exceptionally significant such is the case with the two terms at the skip of minus 613. Your ram, master of the universe, and for him the ram is a gift. The two terms above plus a third term share many letters. The third term qualifies and states a fitting food. We've already looked at this matrix when we examined the lamb as it is seen here. Here we can see that the gazelle fits very well with the flock as it shares letters with the term lamb. The flock and everything is a gift from the math master of the universe. In listing the kosher animals in the Bible, the Bible starts with the herd and the flock and continues with the deer and gazelle in the following verse. In the matrix, the latter appears farther down but are also much more prominent than the rest of the kosher animals. We saw the gazelle at its lowest skip and here it is in a larger skip with a story to tell. The master of the universe is telling us 
a gazelle I glorified. Who can argue that a gazelle is not full of beauty and glory? The Bible tells us that in numerous places, the long terms that bisect this term testify to the glory and the sign of a crown or its beautiful set of horns. Indeed, the master of the universe glorified the gazelle. We know from the Bible and by observation that the gazelle is beautiful and the metrics tell us that for good measure that the master of the universe has done that in two ways by the following terms. He established a gazelle with glory and a gazelle I glorified who? God, truth. We keep moving down with the matrix as it continues with the theme of eating kosher food. Moving down from the term your domestic animal, the matrix tells us you shall eat. When we read the same term in different ways, we can see that it tells us only for the perfect and perfect food. What does it mean a perfect food for a meal? It has to be fitting food. The matrix is specific. From the term you shall eat, it sends two messages, perfect food and fitting food. Why fitting food? For your soul, for your life. What do we have to do for our soul and for our life? Be kosher. In the course of telling us what to eat and why, the matrix introduced by sharing letters, the flock, the herd, and the gazelle. At this point, the deer and the ram are singled out. The door is clearly from the deer family. However, deer and ram are spelled the same in the Bible although they are pronounced differently. If we extend the term fitting food at both ends, we get the term go outside. There is fitting food. The idea behind this term is that the kosher animal is a wild animal opposed to a domestic animal, i.e. this is a more description of a deer as opposed to a ram. However, this could also refer to a ram as Abraham sacrificed a ram instead of Isaac. The ram was out in the wild. Abraham would not take someone else's animal. When read the, the above term in the opposite direction, we see that the animal indeed can be either a domestic or a wild animal. The ram or deer is a present for him. The ram was always considered a proper sacrifice for the master of the universe. The deer is also present for the holy nation to eat. The next term goes well with the previous. The deer is a present for the master of the universe complements the term master of the universe. It is your ram. The term give was prominent with the lamb terms when we examined the flock. With the ram, we also saw that the ram is his and a present for him, all with capital H. With the latest term, give a ram, at first it is not clear that it is to give a sacrifice to the master of the universe. However, when we look at the surface text, it becomes clear. The term ram begins at the beginning of the verse 6 that tells how to build in the altar and its purpose to be used for sacrificing. <laughs>